one in every four Kenyans has suffered some form of mental illness in their lifetime. One, two, three, oops. One, two, three, oops. One, two, three, oops. In 2016, I was diagnosed with mild clinical depression. Depression feels like a dump blanket draped over your body 24 hours a day. Depression sucks the color out of everything that is vibrant, leaving only dull shades of gray. Depression robs you of your appetite. It robbed me of my appetite. I couldn't finish even the smallest of meals, even my favorite meal at my favorite restaurant. But it took me a while to discover that I was depressed. Because I would go to the doctor and say I'm suffering from appetite loss, chronic fatigue, and they would run all these tests and find that there's nothing wrong with me. One doctor saw me and she said, perhaps your problem is not physiological. Perhaps it's psychological. Why don't you go see a psychiatrist? Now, this is Africa. <laughs> Can I get an ahu from my strong African men? Isn't she Dagani? You know, African men, there's two problems, I think, two sicknesses that we can never, ever confess of suffering. The common cold <laughs> and depression. But I knew something was wrong with me. I was not myself, and I had to find a solution. So I mustered up the courage, and I went to see the psychiatrist. She took me through a few questions and said, you know, I think you have mild clinical depression. What this professional said next shocked me. She said, you know, you don't have a serious issue here. There are people with real problems. You have friends, family, you're working. This one will pass. She trivialized my issue. She belittled my pain. I was hoping to get some solace, to get some professional advice, but she brushed it off. And she went ahead to advise that you should take these pills, take this medication, and you'll feel much better. I tried to ask her, why don't we go through maybe some counseling? Why don't you talk me through this? She said, no, just take these pills. The talking will take so much time. <laughs> you'll get better. I took the prescription not to take the pills, but to go and research. So I went and I researched and found what these pills do to you. Now, depression makes you feel very, very low. So the pills kind of make you feel placid, just flat. You plateau. You don't have excitement. You don't have low moments. You're just, lack of a better word, a zombie. And the moment you stop taking the pills, you don't go back to your initial low. You go even lower. So I said, no, I'll not take these pills. I'm going to pray, and I'll get through this. Now, I'm a performing artist, and I'm a musician. But at this time, I was working a job that was not giving me enough time to perform my music and pursue uh, my passion. And so I felt like I'm stuck, and I'm never going to leave this place, and my dream has been snuffed out by the 9 to 5, and I've become part of the rat race. It sounds very bad in Swahili, panya, rat race. <laughs> so this led me to feel gloomy, and the gloom turned to sadness, and a deep sadness, and led to depression. Now, another thing that depression does to you is that it makes you feel ashamed. Because, again, the African man, you're a warrior, Buddha, nini nini, you know. So you don't have that um, freedom to express that you're depressed to your family, to your loved ones, and you hold it inside, which creates an even worse cycle. So I never spoke this, about this to my family, never spoke to anybody. I remember one day we went uh, drone flying. I just won this drone and I was ex excited to fly it. I'm into film and arts. 
And so I went with my friend Muraya to the Ngong Hills to fly it. And as we're flying it, Muraya noticed something's amiss. I'm not quite myself. I'm not having the joy that he would expect me from flying this drone. Muraya took me aside and asked me, what's the matter? Is there something wrong? You don't seem yourself. I took the courage and I said, I'm going to open up to, to Muraya. And I told him, you know what? I've been diagnosed with mild clinical depression. And I opened up and I spoke about how I feel. And Muraya did what that psychiatrist failed to do. He sat there, he was present, and he listened. He didn't offer any advice, he didn't offer any quick fix. He didn't lay his hands and anointing oil over me. He just listened. If somebody comes to you and they're suffering from depression or any other mental health issue, or even if they just say they're stressed, don't be quick to offer a fix. Just listen. Just be present. That's what they really need. That night I went home and I was feeling light as a feather because the depression was still there, but it had been exposed. It had a name. It had even been shamed. And I felt like this is going to be an easier battle to fight. I knelt down beside my bed, prayed and said, God, get me out of this. I'll do all that I can in my strength, but where I fail, get me out. So I went on to see another doctor that all of you see. We share the same doctor, Dr. Google. <laughs> Typed in, what is depression? The results came up, because let's face it, this is, some, this is something new to me, and I think to many of us. We've never really grappled with this issue, especially as the African warriors that we are. So I discovered what it is, and a few things that I could do to get over this depression. One of the things was to exercise. So I remember getting up and saying, I'm going to exercise. Now, just to make you understand how difficult it is, depression makes you fatigued, constantly tired. Even if you sleep enough, you, you, you eat enough, you just feel drained because emotionally, it's taking so much of your energy that it's affecting, affecting you physically. So I tried to exercise. There's a day I sat down lacing up my shoelaces on my sneakers to go out and jog. It took me 45 minutes just to master that strength. It's not that I don't know how to tie my laces. <laughs> it's the fatigue of depression. I tried day two. I tried day three. I told myself, baby steps. What if I just jog to the gate and back? Sounds funny, huh? But that's a step. That's how heavy depression is. When you make it to the gate, I felt like, I've made it this far. Let me get out. I got out of the gate. Went round the estate. Tried this the next day. It became easier. The next day it became even harder. I tried again because I purposed that I will overcome this thing. I will not take pills. I will be victorious. Exercise releases some hormones in your, in your, in your system, some chemicals that make you feel happy. So the more I exercised, the happier I felt, and the easier it was to start to peel that depression off. Step by step by baby step. The next thing I had to do was uh, just change how I interact with people. When you're depressed, you become self-reflective. And so you exclude yourself. And you don't want to talk to people. And the more you exclude yourself, the more you fall deeper in the depression. So I remember I'd be in a crowd setup, And I would say, don't talk to them. But I would fight it and say, go there. Stick in that conversation. Even if it's for five minutes, you'll feel the difference. You will be fighting. It's a battle in the mind. So I started speaking to people. I started helping, volunteering, being present, like Oltesh told us. I would show up. And when I would help other people and listen to their problems, I kind of forgot mine temporarily. Or I realized there's people who are suffering just as much, if not, then in a different way. At the time, I was in a terrible relationship. Maybe even worse than Erosha's experience. <laughs> <laughs> this person, I couldn't express depression. Again, maybe it's the African setup. Maybe they were just a bad person. I couldn't express what I was going through. 
and I think they were part of the, this, this contributed greatly to my depression. I purposed to leave that relationship. I had to watch the internal dialogue I had with myself, the conversations I have. Because how you speak to yourself is very, very important to who you become. So I remember I used to go in the mirror and I read this thing about uh, a certain uh, words that you can say to yourself. So this is what I would say. Wake up, look myself directly in the mirror and say, I am David Mairi Chungi, son of the Most High God. I am not my mistakes. I am not a failure. I am victorious. A bold voice for this generation. I am Simba. Sounds powerful, yeah? I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, I have been practicing. Because the first time I said it, I sounded silly. I sounded foolish. I told myself, what are these things? You become a millennial, or what's going on in your life? <laughs> I love millennials, by the way. So I just, it sounded silly, you know. But I said, let me say it again and again. And the more I said it, the more I felt it. The more I felt it, the more I believed it. The more I believed it, the more I became my words. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now 2018. I'm happy. I'm really happy. And I am in a really amazing relationship right now. And I just want to shout out Moriah if he's in the building. Thank you so much, Moriah. You made a difference in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure there's some of you here who are suffering some form of mental illness, maybe depression, or maybe you're just stressed by the events of life. First thing I'd like you to know is that you are not alone. You're not alone. The voices will lie to you that you're going through this alone. They'll try to tell you that you are a failure, that you're not worth it. Those are lies. You're not alone. The second thing I'd like to tell you is that there's practical steps that you can take to overcome this. A few of them I've outlined in my speech and there's more you can find. But I'd like, you to say, I'd like to say to you, please reach out for help for somebody who will listen. I'd like to finish by quoting my favorite cousin, twice removed, Barack Obama. One in every four Kenyans will suffer some form of mental illness. But like my cousin Barack Obama says, you can overcome it. Yes, you can. Thank you. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart. on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path I've been looking for change, nika conductor li shuka kwa traffic, change ika potea. Do you even care? Insensitive, can't read my needs. Yako tuni kuni somea. Do you even care? Suicide, kuda tried, scuba dive. Ndani ya machozi, ina ogelea. Do you even care? A PTA depression, knee deep, I'm stressing. Taka kurudi happiness, but it's in a fair soul. I need, I need, I need a rope, I'm drowning. 
drowning. I need, I need, I need, I need some hope. Come, come find me, hope. I need, I need, I need, I need a rope. I'm drowning. Oh, oh. I need, I need, I need, I need some hope. Come find, come find me, Nani. Nani, Nani, Jali. Nani. Nani, Nani, Jali. Who even cares? Nani, Nani, Jali. Nani, Nani, Jali. Who even cares? Chakula imeja, bado na lalanja. Appetite imepotea. Who even cares? Huzuni ya nijaza, depression ni kiwaza, ya nilaza, na shindo kwendelea. Who even cares? Na pitia hii depression, knee deep I'm stressing. Wanna get to happiness, but it's in a fair so who, who, who even cares? On Facebook should I share? Who live and say a prayer? Honestly, nani ana ni ombea? I need, I need, I need, I need, I need a rope, I'm drowning, drowning. I need, I need, I need some hope, come find me, come find me. I need, I need, I need, I need a rope, I'm drowning. Drowning, drowning. I need, I need, I need, I need some hope. Come, come find me, na nani, 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 mola, mola wani jali, mola wani jali, mola wani jali. Straight, try.